has a copy of the scriptures that I plan to be utilizing today. And I've entitled our thoughts, Learning from God's Creation. And this applies to the church. There's a lot we can learn. And I've chosen three particularly that the Bible speaks of God's creation. And the first one in a moment is going to be in the form of a donkey or an ass, as the Bible calls him. And the secondly, we're going to talk about the birds of the air, the fowl or the geese, particularly. And thirdly, we're going to be talking about the little bitty, little bitty ant. Three things. And as they work, the church should work. But the first one is a little uh, somewhat different. Let's go ahead and read, if you would, the scriptures. We'll read all the way down to the, the last verse, and we'll hold up on the last one. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 12. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. They shall utterly perish in their own corruption, which having forsa have, it, have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But Balaam was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass, speaking with the man's voice, forbade the badness of the prophet. We we'll drop on down to Job. But ask now the beast, they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee, observe them, or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee. The fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee, who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this, in whose hand is the soul of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind. And in Proverbs 6, Deliver thyself as a roe or as a deer from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, thy sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. So first of all, we're going to be talking about the first part of our text. We have a look at God's create creatures and we learn from them. Particularly this donkey we're going to learn from. When I was growing up, uh, as a young man, they came out with a, a, a movie called Francis the Talking Mew. Y'all remember that? Francis the Talking Mew. And we always had a lot of laughter out of that, but it was funny to that idea that a, a donkey could talk. And I assume that they got that from the Bible story that we have record of that we're looking at today. From Balaam and his donkey. Balaam was a prophet of the Lord. Balaam was approached. Uh, Balaam was approached by Balak, the king of the Moabites. He knew that Balaam was a prophet of God because he asked Balaam if he had put a curse on the people of Israel. When Balaam approached God, he said, "God, can I put a curse on your chosen people?" 
I've been offered a great sum and a high position if I'll do that. God said, no, you can't put a curse on my chosen ones. Nevertheless, Balaam was enticed and he asked, could he follow Balak? Now go where he was at. Y'all know the story. How that as he was riding his animal, his ass, headed the wrong direction, that in his greed, he was thinking about what he was going to get from Balak. Y'all remember, as he rode his donkey, the donkey saw what Balaam could not see. And that was an angel that stood in the way with a sword. <coughs> Balaam was so blinded by his greed, he couldn't see. What was there? And sometimes folk greed will do that. But y'all remember the story of how the donkey itself saw the angel. And the donkey turned aside into the field. And Balaam hit the donkey. And the donkey started again and it was a narrow place and the donkey mashed Balaam's leg and again Balaam hit the donkey and the third time as they approached the angel stood there with a the knife and the old donkey just lay down And again, three times, Balaam struck his donkey. What are you doing? And the Bible says, God opened the mouth. Of the animal, the donkey. And said to Balaam, have I been faithful to you all these years? Haven't I always done what you asked me to do? And this guy was so blinded by greed, Balaam was, that he couldn't even think. He was talking to his donkey. Hadn't happened before, but it's doing it's happening now. And they had a conversation. Now, I was reading up on the different uh, theologians. And some of them said it was literally that God that spoke through the animal. And all I know is the scripture says that God opened the mouth of the donkey. Amen. And the donkey spake. The donkey saved Balaam's life. Because if he had continued further, even the angel testified, I would have killed you. But this animal saved the life. And let me read to you uh, Numbers 22 and verse 28. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. And she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because I hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now I would kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am I not thine ass upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? 
Would I ever want to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. And his sword down in his hand, and he bowed down his head, fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. Greed had taken over. And folk, greed is something we all need to uh, watch out for, isn't it? But now we go from, from the donkey to the fowl of the air. If you would, look down at your paper. One verse, Job 12, verse 7. But ask now the beast, and they shall teach thee. And the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Look at the fowls of the air. And they'll show you something. I looked up the story uh, yesterday as I was preparing for today, and I read about the geese again. But the migrating geese fly in a V-shaped form. Y'all seen those before. You look up and see those geese flying. And uh, people have done a, a lengthy study on those, and they tell us, but flying in the V-shaped formation that they can fly get 71% more flying range by flying together in that manner. And they say if one falls out of formation, he, as soon as he can, he gets back in, in a hurry because he can tell that he's not flying as well. But these geese have a common destination. So they fly as a team. And folks, we are a team as a church. We have a common destination. We're headed to the same place. Here, a few weeks ago, Linda and I were up in East Texas, and I'm not all that acquainted with the phone. I haven't mastered it yet. I'm still <laughs> learning how to use it. But I'd seen on the internet where I'd had a relative buried up at Old North Church, north of Nagadoches there. And I was told what to do. They, they gave the position of the grave. They said it was so many latitudes, so much longitude. I wasn't aware that you could even get that on the phone, but I had the, the, the fellow print store set it for me to where I wanted to go. And y'all know this GPS, it will verbalize or tell you uh, where you're headed, tell you where to turn next and so forth. But from Huntington up to the church, Old North Church, the cemetery, he told me how to get there. And when we drove up into the church yard, it says, you must walk the rest of the way. It spoke to us. So I did, and I followed the arrow of this thing. And we got a little bit close to the, when we got to the location of the grave, sure enough, all these years I've been going to that cemetery where my dad and mom and son, grandfather, great-grandparents are all buried. I've been going all these years and I didn't realize we had some other relatives in the other end of the cemetery. But the thing that stuck out to me is when we walked up to the grave, it says, you have reached your destination. I'm in a graveyard. <laughs> I'm in a cemetery. <laughs> Folks, whether we like it or not, we have a destiny, don't we? The grave waits not too far beyond here, does it? George Bush found out yesterday, and I'm not making fun of George Bush, but hey, uh, it happens to everybody. It doesn't matter how rich or poor you get, it happens to everybody, doesn't it? 
But folk, we're going through this life, we have the same destination we as Christians do, we as a church do. And we fly together, don't we? Now every now and then, if you've observed those geese, you'll find one, he'll move up into the lead geese place because it takes a little bit more effort there. But they let the other one kind of catch up and rest up. While they're flying, y'all ever heard that when, when the geese fly over, y'all hear them? What I read yesterday, it says these things honk. They honk, the back ones do, to encourage the front ones to keep on flying. And folk every now and then a little amen is, is a honk. <laughs> You, you encourage it. Brother Enrique can tell you, you encourage the speaker. At least you, you make him think you're listening. But think about this. As a group together, and we take turns, don't we? We're on the same team. And by the way, when I say honk, some people just honk to make a noise. <laughs> You've seen people do that. <laughs> they tell me nowadays you better watch out you'll get shot for honking your horn road rage they call it so I'm a little hesitant uh, uh, about using the horn uh, something else you may not know that when a goose and that's singular for geese plural <laughs> when a goose Falls by the wayside. When it, when it gets sick or wounded, it drops out of the V shape. Two more geese will drop down with it until it either dies or gets better and is able to rejoin the formation. Folk, life is about helping each other, isn't it? We can't do it by ourselves. We don't want to do the Lord's business by ourselves, do we? So let's go on then to the, the third creature that God made. If you will, look at Proverbs 6, verse 6. One verse. Proverbs 6, verse 6. Go to the ain't thy sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. I got into, Linda and I were, I got in one of those honeydew jobs yesterday <laughs> around the house and we were picking up, cleaning it up and I picked up an old ladder there that our neighbor had left and I picked that thing up and all of a sudden I had a handful of little bitty ants. It got into that thing and it really destroyed the, the use of the ladder. Little bitty things. Those things can still sting. Uh, I tell you this much. The Lord said, consider the ain't and be wise. Learn something from that creature. That having no guide, overseer, or ruler... They continue their mission in life. They gather their food in the summer while there is food. And they gather their food at the time of the harvest, lest it be gone. Ants are not lazy, but they're stingy. They don't want to give up anything they've already got to bite into. But the Lord gave us these creatures and he said we could learn from them. Folks, I believe God gave us all things that we might glorify him. 
He didn't make anything in vain. In East Texas, when I was growing up, if a boy had a pocket knife, he's doing pretty good. We'd learn to whittle. And I said, what you been doing? Oh, I've been whittling. Literally uh, absorbing time. And some people in life find themselves just whittling. Absorbing time. But folks, we need as a church to work together like the ant. An ant will attack any creature they can find. Unafraid. They work together like the church should. And God has given each of us a great job and made us, allowed us to be a part of his body, his church. And he gave us a mission. And folk, when these folk go out on Sunday afternoon knocking on doors, telling people about the Lord that they might be saved, they're fulfilling that mission. When folk come in here and I proclaim the Lord's word, as he told us to. Each one of us has a limited time. If you would, look at your last verse on your paper. Whatsoever thy hand find it to do, do it with thy might. If you're just going to halfway do something, don't do it. Leave it alone. Do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Your final destination, at least for this old body. This old body is going back to the earth from whence it came, isn't it? And the spirit's going back to God that gave it. And he's going to give us a new body like he is. And that's why John said, when we shall see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So, folks, we need to learn a lesson in life. Even these creatures that I mentioned to you, uh, working together to accomplish what God called us to do, and that's to proclaim His word to the ends of this earth. Isaiah said, "How long, Lord?" He said, "Till the earth be without men or inhabitants." God gave us a job. And may the Lord add his blessings to this message this morning. All right.